Good morning everyone, Jordan here. Welcome back to the channel. Today I've got a little bit of fault finding for you. Um, customers called me out because they've got this kind of like annex building, garage slash annex, and it's been tripping out regularly. He said basically whenever you plug something in or even like a phone charger, it just trips. Um, when I came in, so this is the consumer unit obviously, when I came in the RCD was off and I tried to reset it and it just tripped straight away. So I want to show you my kind of fault finding um, procedure that I tend to do of how to narrow faults down. Maybe it will be a benefit to you, maybe it will be helpful to you. Uh, let me know in the comments if you do things differently and if you enjoy my videos hit a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss out on future videos. So basically what I do uh, first is I turn all the circuit breakers off. In the case of a tripped RCD this is, uh, when it won't reset I turn all the circuit breakers off one by one, then turn the RCD on, hopefully it stays in, and then I turn the circuit breakers back on one by one. And in this case I did that and it actually has stayed on now. Um, but obviously there's probably still a fault somewhere. So what I'm going to do is take the cover off and do some insulation resistance tests on the circuits and that will hopefully help me to narrow down which circuit has the problem and be able to sort of um, narrow it down. That's always a goal with fault finding is to narrow it down, narrow it down and eventually you get to the source of the problem. So usually if you can first find which circuit the problem is on then once you've found that circuit, you can go around the various points on that circuit and look to see if there's anything obvious. If there's not, then you can just take those points off one by one and check until you find the problem. That's how I usually do it. So it's sort of a process of elimination, really. Um, yeah. So let me get the uh, get my head torch on and get the board cover off. Uh, uh, so I'll, I'll just. I'll go back to the start and show you how it was when I came in. So basically everything was on like that. All the MCBs were on, but the RCD was off. When I turned that, okay, it's doing it again. When I try to turn the RCD on, it just trips straight away. So what I then do is turn off all the circuit breakers, turn the RCD on, now it stays in, and then one by one, turn the circuits back on. And so far, so good. The RCD is staying on. So it obviously doesn't like just having all that load switched on in one go and hence why it was tripping. But that doesn't really tell us what the problem is. So I'm going to turn everything off again and then I'm going to take the cover off and do some insulation tests. There's full of spiders here. It's like um, Spider City. There's just cobwebs everywhere. Um, so it's a Crabtree Starbreaker board. Obviously just the one main RCD and then lots of MCB. So what I'm going to do first is do an insulation resistance test across all the circuits just to see what reading I get. Uh, so I'll just do uh, neutral to earth first, 250 volts and we've got dead short. Um, then if I do the circuits individually, so that lighting circuit 0 0.17, 0 0.02, 2 0.16, 200, 0 0.01, 200, 200, so it's not any of these, um, but this one was quite low, 0 0.01, um, and this one, 0 0.17, this one, 0 0.02, okay. Right, so these three circuits are kind of suspect because they've all got fairly low readings. So what I'm going to do now is dis disconnect the neutral from those particular circuits. 
Right, sorry about that. The camera cut out for some reason, which is really annoying. But basically, let me show you what process I went through. So I, um, I disconnected the neutrals from the three circuits that I thought were problematic, which is these two lighting circuits and this circuit here, because these were the ones that had low insulation resistance readings from uh, line to CPC. So I disconnected the neutrals and tested those one by one and they were all actually okay. They were either like sort of 10, 15 mega ohms or even one of them was over 200 mega ohms. So then I thought, okay, what I'll do is just go through one by one and disconnect all the neutrals, test insulation resistance between CPC and neutral on all the circuits individually until I get a low reading. And when I took this one out, which is labeled as circuit four, this was zero mega ohms from neutral to CPC. So I, I tested then um, line to CPC on that circuit and it's above 200 mega ohms, completely clear. So that's why it didn't show up when I was testing line to CPC. Now what I've done is turned all the circuits back on, apart from the faulty circuit, and I'm gonna just go and check now around the building and see what's not working. And then I'll be able to know what that circuit actually does. It's labeled up as lighting up. So presumably there's, there's an upstairs to this building and it's the lights upstairs, but at least we can narrow it down and then check out some light fittings or things that look suspicious. So we'll go and do that now. Right, so coming upstairs now, and this is what should be the offending area. Um, so presumably, okay, uh, that switch is not doing anything. This switch is not doing anything either. So we've got recess down lights, halogens in here. Six, uh, which is gonna make it fun. Then we've got a smoke alarm, which is kind of broken. So that's worth checking. We've got a down light here and then two down lights there, one there, one, two, three down that side and three down that side. So basically I'm going to have to, it's going to be difficult, but I'm going to have to try and narrow, narrow it down somehow. I think I'll start by taking the switches off because it's a fairly new build, so they might have done neutral uh, neutrals to the switches, which if they have, we can then disconnect the neutrals and narrow it down. But if not, then I'll check that smoke alarm because that looks a little bit suspect. In fact, I might do that first. And then um, the next step would be to actually take out some light fittings, which is gonna be a bit of a nightmare. Right, so this is actually still live because it must be on its own circuit and it actually looks all right. It's just fallen out, basically fallen out of the ceiling. So yeah, oh, the clips the, the clips in the base are, are broken. I mean, it's probably out of date anyway. Replaced before 2015. So it's due for a new one. So I'll recommend that to the customer. Um, yeah, that's not gonna stay. I'll just recommend that they get a new one put in. But that doesn't solve our uh, mystery. So I'm gonna check these light switches now. Let me know in the comments before I find this fault what you think it might be. Because, well, you experienced guys out there, you've probably got an idea in your head already. I mean, a dead short neutral to earth, to me, suggests that there's like a screw through a wire or something like that. If it was rodent damage or something else, then it wouldn't necessarily be a dead short. Right, okay. I was right about the neutrals to the switches. They've done it in a bit of a funny way. They've put these crimps on, which is not great. So we've got here, um, I can't see any damage to the wires though or anything, but it can so easily be something as simple as the neutrals being pushed too hard into the back and shorting out with the back box. 
So I'll just check this now and see if we've got a better reading or if it's still shorted out. Okay, so still zero. What I'm gonna do as well is do a continuity test. Right, that's interesting. So we've got 0 0.4 ohms. So that indicates that it's, a, it's really hard, hard down to neutral. Like there's a direct, almost direct connection between neutral and CPC somewhere. And the closer we get now, the lower that reading should go. So that's quite helpful because we can kind of track it down by doing continuity tests. I'm just gonna zero my leads out to make sure that they are properly zeroed. And we'll check that again. Yeah, 0 0.44. Okay, so let's check the switch on the other side of this wall and we'll see if we get a lower reading or maybe the problem is just there. I do enjoy a bit of fault finding, to be honest. It's something that kind of really gets your brain going and it's, you know, it's like being a detective in a way, trying to puzzle through methodically and find out what the issue is. It's not something that all electricians are comfortable doing, to be honest. A lot of people struggle with it, but it is something that I enjoy. Okay, so this looks fine as well. Obviously they have done the same thing. They've just crimped these neutrals. I've never seen it done that way before, but I suppose this is better than doing it in a connector block really. So let's check that and see if we're closer or further away. So it's pretty much exactly the same, 0 0.45. So I think what we're gonna have to do now is disconnect these neutrals and on the other side as well and see if we can narrow it down to one particular cable. So I'm gonna have to cut these crimps off and then bring some wargos to redo the connections. So this is where it really becomes a case of you know process of elimination because we're literally now just cutting out parts of the circuit and testing until we find the part that is no good so what i can literally do now is test between this neutral and cpc that is clear and then this neutral and CPC is dead dead short so hopefully this is the feed out to these six lights in which case that is the problem but what I'll do is cut the switch on the other side as well check those cables because it could be that this is the feed in but the fact that this cable is going down suggests to me that this is probably, th this is the feed in and this is the feed out. All right, so this is the other switch. So we'll do the same here. Just cut these off. And then strip these back. And see what we get. So that's clear, that one's clear. Hopefully, if I'm right about the lights next door, yeah, they're all clear. So that's great, we've narrowed it down. That means it's the lights in this bedroom. So I'm gonna put a Wargo on these, put this switch back together, and then we'll have to start taking out some of the light fittings in that bedroom. there has to be a screw that's cross-threaded doesn't there every time what do you do actually about this like when you take screws out 
do you do anything to identify which screw goes in which box? Otherwise I'm gonna to have to re-thread it with my re-threading tool. Okay, so that's back. Let's go next door and see what's going on. This is the part I hate because you just know that when you take these out, you're gonna end up trashing the ceiling. Although they're not fire rated, so that helps actually. Ah, so, transform. So these are halogens. We've got transformers and we've got junction boxes. So what are the chances that an earth wire and a neutral wire are just crushed together in the back of one of these junction boxes? I reckon that's got to be got to be it really because there's no way that you can have a short neutral to earth on these because there is no earth connection on the transformers so class two so this flex is just a two core flex so it literally has to be either a short on one of the cables in between like maybe it's been damaged somehow or it's in one of these junction boxes this one oh man all right, let me zoom in and show you. Right, so this is loose. Never been connected in properly, but they are in the same sleeving together and they do look like they're kind of twisted together. So probably the earth continuity is going through to these. But anyway, they just need popping into that terminal properly. So I'll do that now. And just to do a continuity test on there, and it's, I've got a reading of 0.21. So the reading has halved, but based on that reading, that means that probably if the lights go like that across and back, probably it's one of, on one of these end ones. So I'm gonna check, I'm gonna check this one, do a test and then see it's either probably that last one to be honest based on the readings but we'll see okay this has got a different transformer on it which means it looks like the transformer's been replaced at some point could be that somebody took the junction box open and then they've bodged it up when they've done it all right that's weird because that is clear that indicates to me that we've got a, a lack of cpc continuity somewhere 50 50 which one do you which way do you go let's have a look at this one because it's easiest easier to access so probably it won't be this one but it's easy to check again this transformer looks like it's been replaced and these cables are bunched up inside. Yeah, looks okay. That is weird because I've still got a dead short of zero mega ohms, but the continuity is, is no longer there. So it could be that actually something I've done has just loosened up that short slightly. Oh no, there it is again. 0.83 now, so it's gone up. So, what do we reckon? One of these wires maybe? 0.82. Oh man. Let me check this one now. Again, 0.78. All right. Let's go back. Go back to go back to here. See what we've got here. 0.83. So we're getting further away. So I think it's just a case of disconnecting these cables now. Right, we've got 0.1 mega ohms here now, and I could hear almost like a shorting happening w within this cable, which I've never come across that before. And as I jiggle the cable around, the mystery continues. 
2.87 ohms now. Could it be a bit of faulty cable or? So hard to tell with these things, it's a trouble. But I've obviously budged it slightly. See, we've got three ohms now. 3.3 ohms. So something I've done is making the reading go higher. So trouble is I've not got much length on this, so I don't want to strip it back too much. Let's check this one and see which way it's going at least. Yeah, it's clear. So it's going that way. So I'm going to check. That'll be typical. It'll be that last light fitting. So that's the cable. We've got dead short. 3.6 ohms. So it's somewhere from here to that light there. So I can test all the others now because the others are still connected together. If I test at the switch here, the switch should be clear. So this light here, this wire here goes from that light to that light there. And somewhere on that cable from there to there, there is basically a dead short between uh, neutral and CPC. It's going to be almost impossible to get a new cable in there because it's got all joists and like uh, Celotex insulation. So pulling in a new cable is not going to happen. They've definitely clipped the cabling up as well just to make it worse. So I'm almost at my hour now that I've been here and I just allowed up to an hour for fault finding on this job. So I'm gonna basically put these other down lights back, um, put everything back together apart from these two, and then inform the customer and they can decide what they wanna do. I might just strip this cable back a tiny bit more just to make sure it's not just a little fault within the cable there somewhere. Right, so all those light fittings are back on now. So my final step is just to do an insulation resistance test again on those lights. And now we've got 125 mega ohms, so that's perfect. And if we do the same on the other side, 200 mega ohms. So we've cleared the fault, which means it definitely was that cable, but obviously the problem is still there and needs to be fixed, so we're going to have to figure out a way to do that. But for the moment, I'm going to stick a wire goes on here, like so. Close the switch up and then report back to the customer. All right, guys, so happy I found that. It's quite satisfying, really, to find uh, a fault like that. Let me know in the comments what you think. Would you have done it differently, a different process? And how would you go about rewiring those lights? I'd love to know. It's gonna be tricky because there's insulation everywhere, there's joists everywhere. So I've actually just spoken to the customer and, and he's asked me to just put the light fitting back in the ceiling, leave it disconnected, and then he'll decide if he really wants to get it going again or if he just wants to leave it uh, as it is because it's only one light that's not working at the end of the day. So it's not really the end of the world. As always, if you enjoyed my videos, hit a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already and hit the notification bell. And thanks for watching, have a great day. Okay, it's hot again. <laughs> so a slight update for you before we finish. Um, actually, the way they'd wired the lights was different to what I thought. They basically gone from one side to the other, like that. So it was actually the cable from that light to that light that was problematic. Um, from there, it goes to that light over there. And then from there, it jumps back across to that light there. And those cables are fine. So it's literally just the one from this light across to this light that's the problem. But again, it's gonna be really tricky to actually rewire it. But unfortunately now it means that those two lights are not working either. So it means half the lights in here are not working, which is a bit of a shame. Um, but anyway, just thought I'd update you on that. Obviously things are not always quite as straightforward as you think brain of another electrician how they wired it compared to how i would have wired it it's one of those things 
Anyway, thanks for watching and have a great day.